So the political climate within the Expanse is very interesting, and it's very reminiscent of the Cold War here in real life. So I figured today we could take a closer look at some of these strategic weapons deployed by the UN and the Martian Congressional Republic. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So I shouldn't need to explain to people that in the early days of The Expanse during the first few seasons of the TV show, Earth and Mars aren't exactly best friends. They are basically mortal enemies, very similar to the way the United States and the Soviet Union acted to one another during the Cold War. And one of the ever-present possibilities within the first few seasons of the show is a direct military confrontation between Earth and Mars, similar to the way the Cold War threatened a military uh, interaction between the United States and the Soviet Union. And while the rivalries between the United Nations and the Martian Congressional Republic have many, many different layers, from their fierce naval rivalry to the political sort of proxy operations being carried out within the belt, None are quite as direct as the immediate standoff between the strategic weapons of the UN and the strategic weapons of the MCR. So I figured today we'll take a closer look at those strategic weapons and see exactly what the Expanse's equivalent of nuclear weapons actually look like. By the way, of course, I'm talking politically. There actually are nuclear weapons in the Expanse, and they have a much smaller political impact than they do in our world. So let's talk about the strategic deployment of weapons within the Expanse. For starters, both sides likely use long-range missiles as their primary strategic deterrent. These missiles would either be based on the surface of a planet in likely in-ground nuclear silos, similar to the way nuclear missiles are stored in our world. These silos would be hardened against attack and could launch very quickly. The direct line of communication in between these sites and a ground-based sort of military command center would likely be their biggest advantage. Unlike platforms located, say, in space, for example, they wouldn't need a transmission time necessarily to get the orders to the launch site. Well, we never see these on screen, I would bet anything that they are present on both factions' worlds. But they're not alone. Both factions operate a variety of space-based platforms for their long-range weapons. We see directly that Mars uses stealth platforms scattered throughout the system as a firing position for their long-range strategic weapons. Specifically, we know that the MCRN operated five Stealth Sea Ballistic Missile Launch Platforms scattered across the system. Each of these could carry ten Planet Buster Ballistic Missiles, which functioned a lot like MIRV missiles in real life, or multiple independent reentry vehicles. These missiles each carried 20 warheads that could hit 20 separate targets within a certain radius of the missile's impact site. That meant that a single stealth platform with 10 missiles, each carrying 20 warheads, carried a total of 200 warheads on the platform as a whole. Now, it's obvious the principle behind these stealth platforms. They function a lot like nuclear submarines, specifically the ballistic missile submarines, in our timeline. The idea basically is that you have this very capable, very powerful platform that just hides in place and waits for the order to launch. These platforms were likely unmanned and completely automated, waiting for a launch command to be sent from Martian High Command, and then carrying out the launch process on its own without any human intervention. This would reduce the launch time and allow Mars to have a quicker response time against a UN attack against the Red Planet. So, without stealth technology that's quite as advanced as Mars, what was Earth really doing in response? Well, it's likely Earth was countering the Martian stealth capabilities with sheer numbers. I would imagine that there was a significantly higher number of strategic platforms, possibly in orbit of Earth, and there is a very key reason for this. The planet Earth was defended by a fairly robust railgun system designed to intercept incoming asteroids that could likely also be utilized for intercepting incoming ballistic projectiles. In fact, we see an attempt by Earth's railgun system to stop incoming Martian ballistic missiles during the UNMCR war. So if you want to protect these platforms, it does make sense to put them behind your defensive networks of railguns, so putting these platforms in low Earth orbit makes a lot of sense, and I would bet that there are quite a few of those platforms orbiting the Earth within the Expanse. And what about the damage these weapons do when they impact? Well, it is astounding. 
These nuclear weapons seem to have a significantly higher yield than the ones in our timeline. And as we see when planet busters are used against Earth during the UNMCR war, they are devastating to vast swaths of territory. They easily can devastate most of a continent when employed properly. So while the strategic weapons don't necessarily take quite the forefront that the regular navies do, they're still a very significant part of this political standoff in between the UN and the MCR. And one of the other big aspects of this political standoff is their navies, and one of the most impressive navies in the system, the Martian Congressional Republic Navy, owes its basic entire existence and the sort of state it's in at the start of the show to this standoff. And if you'd like to learn more about the ships within the MCRN, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments whether you think I'm right with my assumption about how the UN deployed their strategic weapons. Do you think the UN is putting them in numerous platforms in orbit and in silos on the ground, or do you think they're deploying them a different way? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have anything else you'd like me to cover from The Expanse, also leave that down below. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.